I'm going to tell you the story about when my son was about one year old. He got sick. He was deathly ill. He was having diarrhea and vomiting at the same time while he was on the scale. He was crying. He was dehydrated. And I saw my son suffer to the point where I spent four hours in the ER holding my son who was passed out on my shoulder from just pure exhaustion. And I was praying that you may not believe in God. And that's okay for right now. But I was praying to God to let me take my son's illness. I, now, first thing, if, if you've read the Bible, if you're a Christian, you would know. One, you cannot bargain with God. And two, you cannot negotiate and you cannot test him. So God answers prayers, but doesn't answer selfish prayers. Like I can't pray to God for the winning lotto numbers, okay? God answers prayers out of mercy, grace, and always to his glory. So I was in the waiting room of the ER praying to God that he would just heal my son and, and give me his illness. I don't care what it is. I don't care what I have to go through. I just wanted my son to be well. And I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. Just, God, please heal my son, help my son, and I'll take his illness. After about six hours in the ER, and the doctors hadn't seen us yet. My son was passed out for hours. We needed to go home, get him in a, a change of clothes, give him a bath, make sure he got some Pedialyte in him and put him down to sleep. So we just left. We never got seen by the doctors. We just left. We went home. We took care of him. He slept the whole night. He was so exhausted. He, he just knocked out the whole night. And the next day, I ended up in the ER myself. Now, right off the bat, the most logical explanation is I contracted whatever he had, right? You wouldn't chalk that up to a miracle. You wouldn't chalk that up to an answered prayer. People would just chalk that up to, I contracted whatever he had, right? So I was in the ER and I had completely different symptoms from my son. I had a fever. I had an incredibly horrible migraine, but that was it. So after a few hours of me at the VA, the doctors decided to give me a spinal tap and the fluid came out yellow and I had viral meningitis. I was hospitalized for 14 days. They couldn't give me antibiotics and uh, turned out that I had acute renal gland failure where my kidney started to shut down. I didn't want to be sick, right? I didn't want to be hospitalized and I didn't want to die. You know, I didn't want to have acute kidney failure, but I can tell you that I was grateful my son was healed and well, and I could not complain about my receiving exactly what I asked for. When you feel that Jesus came down to die on the cross for you, it makes it real personal. And most of us don't feel worthy of that gift because we're not. But my best way of relating to that, I would have traded places with my son in a heartbeat. And I realized that that's exactly how much Jesus loved us, even to the point of just coming down for one person. And if you're watching this video, I'm going to tell you that that one person is you. And if you're a parent, then you can completely relate to the love that you have for your child and how willing you would be to give up your life to save the life of your child. It should feel personal. It is personal. He did it for you, not for all of us. He did it for you. And so at the end of this message, what you need to know is Jesus loves you. He traded places with you the way I would have traded places for my son. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world.